This Week on the Swing, Caitlin O'Donnell talks about this week's letter from the editor. The results of the recent SGA elections are revealed. Cleo, Dan, and Katie Kaler teach you how to make simple peanut butter cookies. And Cassandra Kloos runs through this week's edition of The Pendulum in less than 90 seconds. Hello, and welcome to The Swing. I'm Brittany Lloyd-Jones. Earlier this week, you voted on candidates to serve in the Student Government Association. The results were released yesterday. Take a look. Right. Now, for at-large council positions, we'll start with the sophomore class. The sophomore president is Joseph Incorvia. The sophomore vice president is Sarah Payanta. Uh, sophomore treasurer is Elizabeth Rue. Sophomore secretary, Lindsey Friedman. And sophomore senators, Jennifer Lauterbach. Right. Junior president is Sean Patterson. And junior vice president is Allie Briggs. Junior treasurer is Patrick Brown. Junior secretary is vacant. Uh, junior senators, Lauren Ryman and Gregory Kelly. Senior class president, Molly Shoup. Senior Vice President, Sam Kahane. Senior Treasurer, Kevin Beach. And that's it for the senior class. And for Executive Council, Executive Treasurer is Wellsford Scott Bishopric. Executive Secretary is Leah Burns. For Executive Vice President, there will be a runoff between Elizabeth Burns and Connor O'Donnell. For Executive President, there will be a runoff tomorrow between Darian Flowers and Alicia Johnson. Ooh. This week in the Pendulum, Editor-in-Chief Caitlin O'Donnell wrote a letter from the editor about the Pendulum's role in the Elon community. She's here with us now to discuss her motivation behind the letter. Hi Caitlin, thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, yourself? I'm well, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about a short summary of what the letter was about and what prompted you to write it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like in the past year or so, the pendulum has um, gotten a lot of feedback about the stories that we've written and, that the, and the editorial stances that we've taken. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that the pendulum is quickly becoming not just a PR branch of the university anymore, mm -hmm. which is very exciting, but when you become more forceful and more challenging in your coverage, you're obviously going to get a little bit, little bit of pushback. And so the purpose of the letter was just to clarify that while we may present some editorials and some front page stories that not everyone is going to agree with, that's our job as a newspaper organization. And um, I personally and professionally have come to terms with the fact that as a journalist, it's not your job to make everyone happy. It's your job to inform and entertain and enlighten the community in the best way you can. And sometimes that means um, challenging people's assumptions and really calling people out. But I also wanted to make clear that the pendulum isn't sensationalizing information. It's not, you know, taking a stance against a certain person or a certain administrator. We truly believe that every story we, we run should have meaning to the, to the student body. And so that's really where we're coming from. Gotcha. And can you tell me, with you personally, what would you do if you approach someone as a reporter and they didn't want to give a quote or they've had bad history with the pendulum? How would you react to that situation or what would you say what would be your stance? Yeah, that's actually something I addressed within the letter from the editor. Um, as far as particularly departments or individuals who refuse to speak on the record with the pendulum in light of past experiences. And my stance on that is that it's detrimental to everyone because if you're going to clam up, then you're letting that information that you didn't agree with sit and you're not giving any response to it. Um, you're not challenging, you know, assumptions that people made as a result. You're not, um, you know, correcting any misinformation that you might have seen. So really you're doing a disservice to yourself and you're also mm -hmm. doing a disservice to the community. So in cases where that's happened in the past, I think you have to be professional and explain, you know, this is, this is where we're coming from, this is why we need your input, but also just make it very clear that um, they, have, they have a voice that's important to the pendulum and we want to hear it and publish it within our pages. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about Elon's pendulum role in the community? Yeah, um, I kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier, but I think um, the role of the pendulum is not to sensationalize, not to be, you know, left-leaning or, um, you know, have bias. And I, I mentioned this in my letter from the editor, but um, to really be a source for entertainment and information and to just enlighten the Elon community. That's really what I think about when I um, think about journalism. It's, it's like being a student of life. It's not... Mm -hmm calling out people all the time. It's not always being positive. It's a good mixture of both and really bringing forth the issues that students are going to care about and also that administrators in the town of Elon are going to care about as well. 
So I think that um, our staff really takes that role really seriously. And anyone who does have a problem with, with a front page story or an editorial, you know, come to us. We're not yeah. this group of students on the third floor of the Elon Town <laughs> Center who are totally unapproachable. We want letters from, to the editor. We want comments on our website. We want to hear from people about our coverage because that's the only way we know whether or not the coverage that we're providing is actually meaningful to the community. So I hope we hear from a lot more people in the future. I think um, on our new website we've been getting lots of good comments. If you look, um, a lot of people have been responding, but we want more. We can never have enough. So. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, I hope you get feedback on this letter as well. I hope so too. And thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you. Baking at college is often a challenge, so here at The Swing, we've decided to bring you a series of simple recipes you can make with just a few common ingredients. This week, multimedia reporter Emily Herring is with freshman Katie Kaler and sophomore Cleo Dan to show you how to make cookies with just eggs, peanut butter, and sugar. Take a look at our new segment, Cooking After Class. Hi, I'm here with Katie Kaler and Cleo Dan, and today we're making peanut butter cookies. All right, guys, what's step one? Step one is take one cup of sugar. The greatest thing about this recipe is that it only actually has three staple ingredients. You just need peanut butter, sugar, and one egg, and you mix them together. And then you can sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top once we're done. So they're really quick and easy, and chances are you already have these ingredients. So they're a great college food. So now we're just going to add the peanut butter to the sugar. And then we're going to crack the egg. Um, you don't really have to whip the egg before it goes into the mix. You just put it in and then we just mix it all together. Really quick and easy. Super simple. And then you'll have a peanut buttery masterpiece at your fingertips in about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to put this here. <laughs> and then we're just going to mix this together. And if you have an electric mixer by any chance in your dorm room, it's probably a lot easier to use an electric mixer. But if you're like me, I don't have one where I live. So any type of spoon or other um, utensil, you can just whip it up like that. And it shouldn't take you too long. So now that we're done, we're just going to um, roll them into little balls. And we're going to put them on the cooking tray. And then we're just going to pop them in the oven for 10 minutes. And you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees beforehand. So. All right, should we try this? Okay, yes. let's go for it. I'm so excited. I want this one. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. Well, this has been Cooking with Katie and Cleo. I'm Emily Herring. Thanks for watching. Finally, here's Cassandra Cluse with a 90 second rundown of what else you can find in print and online this week here at the Pendulum. Thanks, Brittany. The Elon University Board of Trustees recently approved a tuition increase of 3.99% for the 2012-2013 fiscal year. The cost of tuition and room and board will now total $38,460, including standard room and board. The increase is the smallest in tuition since 2004. Elon is set to complete the transition from Blackboard to Moodle by June of this year. About 300 courses are already active on the system and training sessions have been provided for faculty making the switch. Some student leaders have voiced concerns about moving their Blackboard documents to Moodle and training sessions will be offered to student leaders as well. Blackboard costs the university about $22 per student while Moodle costs the university about $4 per student. Junior Laura Sturm, Vice President of Spectrum, Elon's Queer Straight Alliance, has been leading a charge to persuade Elon to offer gender neutral housing to students. Sturm collected about 800 responses in a survey to gauge student opinion on the idea and will begin analyzing the results in the coming weeks. Elon alumna Victoria Tucci is currently producing a gender-bending version of the Shakespeare classic Romeo and Juliet. The play features two women as the star-crossed lovers and opens in New York City March 9th. It will move to the Common Ground Theater in Durham from March 14th to 17th. And finally, in sports this week, the Elon Phoenix baseball team kicked off its season last weekend with three victories. The Phoenix won 7-1 against the University of Akron and 4-1 and 4-3 against George Mason University. I'm Cassandra Kluse and thanks for watching the 90 Second News Desk. Thanks Cassandra. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lloyd-Jones. For the latest news, multimedia and podcast, head to elonpendulum.com. Thanks for watching and have a great week.